Darth Dick Cheney Vader is going to lament minor military cuts here. Uh, this is quite sad. He said it means we're entering an area where America dominance in the seas, in the sky, and space can no longer be taken for granted. Now, why do I imagine that if America's not going to fill that void, somebody else will, and why do I suspect it's not going to be somebody very favorable to our interests? Well, and it's, it's also a reflection of the notion that somehow a strong America, well equipped with a strong military, is a, is a danger to international peace and stability, and it's just exactly the opposite is true. And History teaches any lesson that's that the world's a safer, more stable place when the United States is strong and, and is prepared to use that strength when necessary. Uh, the way I read this, they're, they're basically making the decision of the Obama administration that they no longer want to be dominant on the seas and the skies and, and in space. And uh, their budget reflects that. The radical cuts uh, in terms of force structure and size, the, uh, this notion that we no longer want to have... Uh, a force that's capable of uh, any uh, sustained uh, occupation of a foreign territory is, uh, you know, that, that's a basic fundamental decision that drives uh, and supposedly justifies this. But lots of times you don't get to make that choice. Circumstances will make that choice for you. The other thing I know for a fact, too, Sean, from keeping in touch with some of my old friends that I used to deal with in the Middle East, um, they no longer have any confidence at all in American security guarantees. They're absolutely convinced that they can no longer trust the United States to keep its commitments. That includes Israelis and Saudis and a lot of others in that part of the world. They peddle this line that now we're going to pivot to Asia, but they've never justified it. And uh, it's, I think the whole thing is not driven by any change in world circumstances. It's driven by budget considerations. He'd much rather spend the money on food stamps than he would on a strong military or support for our troops. He'd much rather spend it on food stamps than supporting the troops. First of all, you fucking living embarrassment to the United States of America. Over 900,000 veterans depend on food stamps. So supporting food stamps is supporting the troops. Second of all, he's lamenting military cuts and saying we're going to go to post world war or I'm sorry pre world war 2 levels and that's not true there's a million headlines out there that all say the same thing right now and they're wrong in fact i wish it were true i wish it were true that we were going back to pre world war 2 levels but it's not and i'll give you those numbers in a second but first some perspective as to just how big the united states military actually is so the Ron Paul fact that we give you all the time, let me reiterate that. The U.S. has 900 military bases in 130 countries. Is that big enough for you, dick? Think about it. Uh, now let's look at a chart, U.S. military spending versus the rest of the world. Yeah. I picked 2010 here for reference, but any year is the same result. This is from defense.gov. And this is, these are the official numbers. I purposely went with the more conservative estimates. Now, this is the U.S. military budget as a percentage of discretionary spending for fiscal year 2013. And it's from the Office on Management and Budget. 57% of discretionary spending is military spending. 57%! Only 5% is for health. That puts that in perspective. 6% is for education. Totally insane. Also, Business Insider article. The 10 biggest employers in the world. That's the title of the article. The 10 biggest employers in the world. Number one, U.S. Department of Defense. 3.2 million people. The biggest employer in the world. Gee, you think the, the military might be big enough and maybe we could scale back just a little bit? The cost of the Iraq war by the year 2053, when all is said and done, after you calculate the interest payments and the rest, $7 trillion. $7 trillion. And who's our biggest enemy right now? Not Hitler, not Stalin, 
dudes who shit in caves don't shower and have weaponry from the 1850s. We're concerned about jihadists and Al-Qaeda, and we have this large a military? Seven trillion dollars? Was it really worth spending all that money? And that doesn't even include Afghanistan. Now, are you ready for the cuts that the Obama administration wants? You ready for this? They want to take the size of the army from 570,000 people, that's the post-9-11 high, to 450,000 people. 570,000 people to 450,000 people. And they do that over time. They don't do it, like, overnight. Okay, that is as moderate a cut as I could possibly imagine. That's nowhere near big enough a cut. And as far as the, the cuts go in raw numbers, it's $48.7 billion uh, cut every year for 10 years. Okay? Now, let me put up that other chart one more time so you could uh, see how big of a cut that would be. If you take $48.7 billion off that, you're not even at the $600 billion mark. We're still way outspending the rest of the world. In fact, the U.S. military outspends almost all of the world combined. That's absolutely insane right there. And also, the, the pre-World War II levels, the real pre-World War II levels, and the army was about 270,000 people. Again, we're cutting it to, cutting it to 450,000 people. This is a joke, man. This is a joke. Dick Cheney, you want something to really complain about? Imagine a world where uh, I got to make that call as to how much we'd cut the military. <laughs> uh, without even looking at the details, I'm telling you right off the bat, at least a 50% cut. It would be at least a 50% cut. And guess what? We would still dwarf the rest of the world if we did that.